The Empire struck back indeed, but the Rebels have found the new exhaust port on the new Death Star with their non-X series CPUs. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I am Reese of the Four Piece Variety of Walking Triple XL, and I bring you most auspiciously good news today. Because from four o'clock, these are no longer under NDA, the new 7000 series X series chips. And hopefully our review will be live at that exact moment so that you guys can get a very first hand experience of what it's like on the African continent with these chips. It is a bit warm here now in the summer. So we're going to start off with a precursor there of being that the wattage and stuff is so well contained without using Ryzen Master on these chips. They gave like literally the best thermal performance I've pretty much ever seen out of any AMD with these sort of clock speeds and performance results. Uh, I've got the 7900 and the 7700, no 7600 non-X for this. Uh, I did do it with the other set of CPUs, but it's interesting because this is the first eight core that I've tested on the 7000 series and generally, I think that's what a lot of gamers and crossover sort of workspace environment guys are looking at our eight core solutions. They've been popular since, well, 1700X, 1800X, 1700. They brought it three eight cores with their first generation stuff, 2700 and 2700X. And then it's kind of, been a mixed bag of what we've gotten the 5700x only coming out right at the end of the 5000 series lifetime but in this launch it does seem like 7700 and 7700x are going to be a bit more of a focus but these two chips specifically the 7900 and the 7700 are really cleverly set up i absolutely love what you've done here amd I, I see your game, you rogue, and how you are combating the big blue empire over on the other side. So let's talk spec as a precursor to this review. So 7700, 8 core, 16 thread, huge amounts of cash. I think that was the most noticeable thing uh, immediately out of the gate was two lanes for the level two cache and then a 32 meg for the level three cache. So huge amounts of cash on there, which is really nice to see especially for single core performance enjoyers like us gamers etc that's really nice and the 7900 just doubles down on that and just takes it one step further i think the total cash there is over 70 megabytes that's a huge amount of cash on performance on these chips tdp is though 65 watts that's what they're aiming for we they are looking to keep these as wattage efficient as humanly possible it's a really big focus for them even in the reviewer kit that we get it's a massive focus there is how good the wattage versus the performance is for these chips and it really is the bullet point of the presentation uh, if you're building like a matx or rtx build then these are in a lot of ways no-brainers because they're easier to keep cool than uh, Jacob Zuma on the podium uh, under, question, under crossfire questioning. It is amazing how cool he can keep while being that corrupt. It's, pr it's very, very impressive. Uh, and it's equally impressive in this case, how cool these guys kept while giving absolutely exceptional performance. Next then we have to cover the test bench so we know what our basis for testing is. It's exactly the same as what we had with the X-Series chips, which is great. Just the cooler was swapped out for actually a little bit worse of a 240 than the castle in performance testing and stuff. I have found the H100 to be a little bit, a little bit worse than that. So bear that in mind when you do see these performance results and how good and stuff the temps etc were so like i said h100 rgb over there we've got our old faithful 3070 ti supreme x over here for the gpu testing we've got the 6000 megahertz kit as well cl38 from a data xbg one click as well docp and it they literally never gave me a problem with any of the amds so i can attest to these working at least with asus x670 boards uh, and with the 7000 series chips that these will be basically absolutely flawless. I didn't have a single hiccup from that. 2TB NVMe, SN570, good old Western Digital backup over there for the storage. And then like I say, we've got this ROG X670E-A motherboard, which just looks absolutely fantastic holding all of this together. So we're not testing it on like a mid-range entry level sort of setup. This is the peak performance that you're probably going to get from these CPUs. So with that in mind, let's get into some performance testing. Now gaming, I went a little bit deeper. I wanted to fiddle around 
around a bit more in there, especially with having done so much with the 13 gen stuff and with this GPU, I wanted to have that for sort of comparative. And as you'll see, it runs games. There's absolutely no problem, especially with games like CS going well over 600 frames absolutely smashing my 5900x scores with the same gpu uh, a little bit uh, uh envy inducing i'm going to uh, this 13 gen and 7000 series things just upset me because they like literally absolutely trounced on previous generation stuff and it's just the continuation thereof now when we get to cinebench however that's where things get a little bit interesting oh before we go there there was some anomalous data with cyberpunk you'll see there for some reason the 7700 just kind of got destroyed uh, i don't know why that is it's a bit of a perplexing one to me most of the games that i've tested get into the 120 130 fps range um that is the only one that did that ever pretty much uh except for like very entry level cpus uh, like 4500s and 5500s and stuff uh, those generally do tank there a little bit uh, beyond that though clearly it can game we'll 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 push that one to the side we won't really talk about that one because if you look at like fire strike for instance it's almost a dead heat even between the 7900 and the 7700 even with four extra cores usually there's quite a big difference on the physics score but in this instance not so much so there's obviously a thread count limit there that it's running into something to that effect there i couldn't quite put my finger on it but the, the gaming performance is absolutely exceptional let me look at multi-thread for Cinebench. Now, with their stock clocks and stuff and their stock out of box performance, these things don't chew more than 88 watts at the socket. That's literally what it got to. It's designed for 85. These push three watts over that, which is not even a percent on that sort of scale. So, yeah, it's a, uh, well, it's a, uh, I lie, it's like 3% on that sort of, well, a bit more than that on that sort of scale. But it's, it's under 5%. So, it's nothing really to write home about as far as like, oh, this chip was pushing way more than it should have been. These boost clocks and stuff are erroneous, et cetera, et cetera. That should be your out of box performance. And the cooling, like I said, with this 240 mil on it, I literally never heard the fan curve increase once. Not on a single gaming benchmark, not in any of the Cinebench runs. They were, abs it was absolutely flawless. There's no noise and stuff coming from these. They use so little water. They just, they just sip there at the, at the socket. Just, just a little sip. It's very, very light on power. That's a big plus for me on these X-Series chips, like I said, for those environments where you just don't have space, then you know you can still get really good performance from a low wattage thing that's going, you can put a decent air cooler on, honestly. If you took a, even a 7900 and you put a decent air cooler on it, like an AK400 or a Cooler Master Hyper 212, that's probably never ever going to go over 60 degrees. I literally only saw the north of 55 with absolutely no fan curve. But then I got, finally got the kit, the reviewer kit. Uh, with all the reference points and then they showed me the ryzen master scores and i was like my scores don't look like that oh no we have to go and ryzen master the system which does take a considerable amount of time so i'd managed to ryzen master this guy the 7700 to see that performance difference and it's huge it's absolutely massive performance increases looking at like 15 to 20 percent but on multi-thread single core performance not really changing all that much maybe three percent is what you're going to see but the multi-thread is a huge game and it's not the same as previous generations. I did my 5900X as well just to double check on that to see how much Ryzen Master had improved and while it does help me go north of 5 gigahertz on single core, it really didn't make that much difference on multi-threaded. Going from 20,700 to 21,200 or 21, it was a factor of 5%. It was 1,200 points on that scale. It's less than 5%. So it's not as prevalent as it is with the 7,000 series modules. So what you've got here is a hyper-efficient chip that you can do extreme wattage control on, etc., and just leave it in the normal default mode, mode at least. Or if you PVO it and you use your Ryzen Master, you're gonna get like a 15, 20% performance improvement. So they are built as 65 watt chips, but they can be pushed quite a lot further than what they come out of box. So this 7900 now, with its price point coming in at like basically 7K is what we're gonna hopefully see these for locally retailed at. This is now extremely competitive with Intel's mid-range stack. This chip I literally just saved like Ryzen's whole lineup for me. The price point decreases as well 
on DDR5 becoming more and more aggressive. The 6,000 megahertz kit is four and a half grand. If you look at the same 32 gig RAM on a premium DDR4, it's four grand. So it's very close. It's a 10% increase in price now to go for DDR5. And then obviously the new socket is gonna have a longer lifetime built into it. And this is on the cusp of the ND 3D launches coming out sometime end of Feb, I think is what they pro pro projected it for. I'll put the date on screen. So hopefully we get those samples with a bit of time before, like a week or two, then I could do the full Ryzen Master setup on those and see what the performance differences are um, a, a lot more accurately for you. But at least I can show you on screen that it, it does make a considerable difference. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be based on your cooling and your specific environment and performance is gonna help or hurt that situation. You know, me on OpenAir, I don't really have the, any of the contentions of a PC case stopping airflow. Everything's as direct as humanly possible. A little bit of airflow in the room and you basically got the best sort of cooling and performance. That's why I have it like this is because I don't want to have that interference of a PC case in the environment because it's it's literally going to vary per PC case and per cooler and etc. But the basis of the potential of what they've created over here is absolutely fantastic. These non-X series CPUs really are, like I say, saving the product stack for me. It's become hyper competitive in the mid range suddenly thanks to the 7900 coming in at like $400 like it's a that's an absolutely sick price it's massively price different from the 7900x and the multi-threaded performance on the 7900x is massively better it's over 28,000 4,000 uh, points on that scale you're looking at like 24 say I'd probably get about 25 out of this chip so there's more than a 15% performance difference between the two chips so it's nicely stacked in the product range as well and this is all with the, the bearing in mind those 3d caching chips are on the on the horizon as it were and um, yeah if the 5800 x3d is anything to go by those are going to be equally as exciting. So good job, AMD, for coming back to the party. Give you a, a, a solid 10 out of 10 for these products. I love their dynamic sort of um, wattage control. It's really nice for, as system builder to go, uh, like uh, you literally have people come up to you and go, I want an ITX build, I want an MATX build. And always the problem is how to get it in there with decent cooling and stuff. It complete, this 7900 just completely eliminates the problem. Hits 5.4 gigahertz single core. It's 5.4 gigahertz single core. Gives absolutely exceptional gaming performance, almost in line with the X-Series chips at a discount as well. So you don't have to go all the way there, you know, making it more accessible. The wattage as well. If you want to get a mid-range board and put a 7900 on it, that's going to be probably one of the best, like, price-first performance gaming systems you can buy. So, yeah, I'm very much enamored with this. I might want one of these in my own near future <laughs> to upgrade my own PC because all of these are faster and it's unacceptable. Anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. If you have, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.